Hello. In the next series of videos, we are going to talk about output stages and power amplifiers. We're already familiar with small signal amplifiers, and when we describe the small signal amplifiers, we did so in terms of performance parameters such as the small signal gain, as well as input-output characteristics, input resistance, output resistance, etc. Small signal amplifiers can be used as standalone systems, but oftentimes they are part of larger systems known as multi-stage amplifiers. The final stage of a multi-stage amplifier is referred to as the output stage. The purpose of the output stage is to deliver power to a load, which is external to the amplifier. And they're different from small signal amplifiers in that uh, oftentimes, the, by the time the signal reaches the output stage, it has gone through different stages of amplification. And therefore, output stages tend to deal with large signals. Um, and so we, one should use caution when using the small signal models that we use uh, for the analysis of small signal amplifiers. Because of their particular function and characteristics, uh, there are specific performance parameters that we use for output stages, uh, such as output resistance are out, which ideally we would like it to be as low as possible, ideally zero, in order to avoid uh, loss of signal gain, you know, as we want to have our signal delivered to the load. Power efficiency is another important uh, characteristic or performance parameter of output stages, and it measures how much of the power provided by the supplies is delivered to the load versus how much is dissipated in the output stage. And so it's typically expressed as uh, the ratio of the power delivered to the load by the power delivered uh, by the supplies, and typically as a percentage, so times 100%. And finally, there is... Uh, the linearity. We want the output stage to um, have an operation that is as linear as possible so it doesn't introduce additional frequency components in our signal or, or higher order harmonics into our signal, which will affect the fidelity of our signal. And the linearity is typically measured by the total harmonic distortion or THD, which is basically the ratio of the RMS value of the higher harmonics, excluding the fundamental divided by the RMS value of the fundamental frequency, or expressed as a percentage of the RMS value of the fundamental frequency. So sometimes that will also come specified as, um, as the ratio times 100%. In terms of um, the power, output stages can be coarsely classified into low power or high power. And uh, uh, roughly, we say if we are dealing with less than one watt of power, we consider that amplifier of the output stage to be low power. And if we're dealing with more than one watt of power, we'll consider that we're talking about a high power output stage or a high power amplifier. You can think of the comparison, for example, between a, a transmitter in a cell phone that is dealing with roughly one watt of power or uh, the amplifier that is trying to, um, a stereo system that is trying to deliver uh, hundreds, tens or hundreds of watts of power to a set of speakers. And th that would be clearly a high power amplifier. And a power amplifier is simply an amplifier which has a high power output stage. So basically it's dealing with signals um, at the output that can reach those power levels of greater than one watt. And when we're dealing with power amplifiers, there are certain design considerations, practical design considerations that we need to keep in mind. Uh, number one, when we are dealing with high levels of power, we typically will use power transistors in our circuit. And so we are going to take a, a look at some of the power transistor characteristics and how they differ from the small signal transistors that were used in the design of small signal amplifiers as well as there are thermal issues. Uh, the reason for that is there is this high power um, in the system which gets dissipated in the output stage. And when it's dissipated, it basically gets converted into heat, raising the um, temperature of the junction, the junction temperature within the transistor. If we look at the data sheet for a regular transistor, we will see that uh, there is an apps max characteristic for junction temperature, typically in the order of 150 to 200 degrees C. 
And so if we increase our junction temperature beyond the uh, maximum allowed junction temperature, we risk uh, causing permanent damage to our transistor, essentially destroying our transistor. And so we're going to see a specific uh, design methodologies that are used in order to uh, control the, the, these thermal issues in order to provide better thermal stability for our circuits. Output stages um, and power amplifiers are typically classified based on the percent of time that the output transistors are turned on or are conducting. And as we shall see, that is very much linked to the power efficiency of the output stage. So I've listed here uh, different classes of output stages, class A, class B, class AB, and class C. And uh, notice that they are sorted in terms of their conduction angle, or, you know, it's, that roughly means the duty cycle, the, the percentage of, uh, of the entire period that the transistor is on. And so based on that, we will have uh, the class A output stage, where the transistor is on for the entire cycle. It's represented there in the first graph, and we can see the representation of the, the collector current in the output transistor, IC, versus omega T, which is just the angle. So as the signal uh, moves, as we go through different periods, we will see that the transistor is always conducting, meaning the collector current uh, always has uh, a non-zero value. Uh, the way that is accomplished is by biasing the transistor appropriately. So the uh, collector bias current, which I've labeled there ICQ, is going to be sitting at a value that is going to ensure that the um, transistor will never be in cutoff for saturation. So basically the transistor is always on through the entire cycle. And I represented more than one cycle there. So you can see in the labels, uh, pi will be half a cycle, or what corresponds to 180 degrees, pi radians. Um, 2 pi will be the entire cycle, or 360 degrees. So we can see that for a class A amplifier, the conduction angle is 2 pi, or 360 degrees. It's always conducting through the entire cycle. A class B amplifier is characterized by transistors that are uh, conducting for half a cycle, so 180 degrees of conduction angle, or uh, pi, if you're talking in radians. And so we can see that in the second graph, where um, the collector current only has a non-zero value between zero and pi radians in this case, so for half a cycle. And during the other half a cycle, the transistor is turned off, thus yielding better power efficiency. As we shall see, that there are other problems uh, that arise with these class B configurations. We talked about not just power efficiency for output stages, but also the importance of linearity or total harmonic distortion. And so a compromise between the power efficiency um, and the linearity issue is the class AB amplifier. Uh, which, as we can see in the graph, it's, uh, it's conducting for a little over half a period. And so we say the conduction angle is greater than 180 degrees, but less than 360 degrees, less than the class A amplifier. And uh, we achieve that by biasing that output transistor uh, at the value that ensures the transistor is conducting for slightly over half a period. So the transistor um, is still on uh, during a portion of the second half of the cycle there, between pi and 2 pi radians. And finally, the class C amplifier. The conduction angle is less than 180 degrees, meaning they conduct for less than um, half a period, as we see in the figure, and therefore they're going to yield the best power efficiency. And we shall see that these are typically used in uh, TV systems, for example. This is by no means a complete picture of the different classes of amplifiers. In fact, there are, you know, class D, class E, class F amplifiers. Uh, beyond class C, they typically are going to use a combination of analog and digital techniques. So, for example, in a class D amplifier, uh, we will see that the transistor is being used as a switch. Um, and when the switch is closed, essentially the voltage across is zero. When the switch is open, the current is zero. And so these uh, classes of amplifiers can achieve very high power efficiencies 
uh, very close to 100% efficiency because of those reasons. We're going to focus just on these types um, in the remaining videos. Thank you.